Well, for more on the reaction that we saw in bond markets and also in anticipation of that RBA decision tomorrow, I'm joined live by Simon Michelle from Fig Security. Simon, a very warm welcome to you this morning. Thanks for joining us. Morning, um, we'll get to the RBA decision in just a moment, but the Bank of Japan, certainly now their turn to provide that support uh, by applying those negative rates. Um, I saw Australian bonds actually affirmed pretty strongly off the back of that decision. It looked very positive as global yields fell uh, on the back of that uh, announcement by the, by the Bank of Japan. Look, cast our mind back to December and we had both the Bank of Japan and the ECB come out and uh, say they weren't going to make any changes to their stimulus packages. They were happy to hold them. Uh, that was before the US moved and uh, obviously, uh, you know, at the end of uh, January we've seen uh, the Bank of Japan have to jump into the driver's seat again. Um, so, you know, the market took that very well. A lot of positive sentiment on that. But, uh, you know, just pushing global yields down into uh, new territory. U.S. yield curve down about 25 basis points from its peak since that uh, tightening in mm. December. Absolutely. And I guess really significant that we have seen those rates moving into, into negative territory. The other question is how, how long the, the impact is actually going to last, whether it will have sort of a limited impact or, or a lasting impact. Well, this is the thing. I mean, we've seen this uh, strategy used by Europe. Uh, you know, it's all very uh, well to uh, try to force banks to uh, push that money into the general economy, lending it through to small and medium uh, businesses. But, uh, you know, those businesses need to be confident that they're going to have the ability to generate some growth from that uh, that lending. So, you know, I think the uh, corporate sector has been reluctant to take advantage of this. Mm. And, uh, you know, until you get that movement uh, down in the coal trenches, it's going to be very difficult for central bankers to continue to use these policy measures. Uh, risk spreads as a result of the, the Bank of Japan action. Take us through what, what they've done. Well, this has been interesting because, uh, you know, it's been a, the periphery story in the bond mm. market here has been uh, widening credit spreads or widening risk premiums. And we've seen uh, a lot of selling out uh, after the US movement of high yield bond funds, a lot of high yield bond funds selling out of their bonds and that's pushed these spreads wider as well. They got up to about one and a half percent the Australian index that's down now to about 1.38 so you know we have seen that start to ease back and that reflects that more positive sentiment as well Leanne. So not only uh, I guess markets reacting to the Bank of Japan we also saw those growth figures coming out of the United States fourth quarter GDP. Um, slower growth though coming mm. through I mean does that actually reduce the chances of the Fed now actually raising rates um, in March? Look, it certainly makes it more difficult for them, Leanne. Mm. I, th I think you're spot on. You know, the market's just really discounting uh, any further uh, increases this year, uh, you know, possibly one at the end of the year. But, you know, you look at the two-year uh, US Treasury yield, you know, it's down at, uh, you know, it's down about 25 basis points from where it was post the uh, increase by the uh, Fed in December. So the market's really moving away from those dot points, essentially, that the Fed gave us. Uh, it's going to be very tough. I mean, you know, when you've got an environment where you've got Bank of Japan, ECB, Bank, uh, Bank of China, People's Bank of China, obviously all trying to stimulate, all trying to keep rates low. It's very hard to run against that and I think that's a challenge that's going to be further accentuated mm -hmm. uh, over the coming months from the US. In light of that, because I, I was noting this morning, investors pulled a net almost three billion US dollars out of stock mutual funds. That was the seventh week of outflows in the past eight weeks. So really, that continuing theme, I suppose, of investors flocking to those safe haven assets such as bonds. We, in light of those comments and those expectations reducing for for rate hikes this year, I mean, mm. is that likely to to continue being the theme of 2016? Look, I think it is. I mean, it's been a really interesting start. The end. Investors are looking for where to park their money to get. A a decent return mm. and uh, you know as you see uh, equity markets and other markets struggle to generate any growth uh, and return and uh, you know lowering dividends as well uh, you know we are seeing investors move back into the bond market and say well look I'm happy to take four and a half five percent return in the bond market because I just don't think I'm going to get that I didn't get it last year um, and so we're getting a lot of unwinding of those positions on the back of not only that move by the US but this slowdown these you know lower inflation and growth forecasts coming through really pushing down the potential for, for growth through 2016. Very much a central bank focus, it seems, at the moment. We speak of Bank of Japan, the Fed, but, of course, the RBA in focus this week as well. Their first meeting of, of 2016 uh, happening tomorrow. Um, given, Simon, that we're seeing, you know, such a strong jobs market at the moment and, obviously, the, the lower Aussie dollar, is it likely that we'll see the RBA on hold tomorrow? Look, I think so. I think if, uh, you know, if I was a central banker anywhere in the world at the moment, Glenn Stevens' job's looking pretty uh, good. Uh, you know, if you look at this local data, 
nice solid improvement good solid trends both in uh, the labor market as you say uh, also in uh, you know consumer demand we're seeing good positive as well confidence is uh, looking positive also uh, if anything I think that uh, what we're starting to see on the back of these global yield movements is uh, the Australian uh, yield curve start to price in the possibility of a further rate cut I think that's possibly the, where the greater risk is rather than any increase in rates but look I think pretty steady as she goes while uh, they sort of keep their eyes on what's happening elsewhere in the world at the moment. So you say pricing in further rate cut I mean how many a any expectations? At, at this stage about one uh, uh, you know quarter of a percent down so that would bring the cash rate down to about 1.75 that's really emerged just with that yield curve falling over the last week or so so you know market now pricing in lower rates than this uh, current uh, two percent cash rate so I think definitely risk that uh, you know the RBA may have to follow <laughs> other mm -hmm. central bankers uh, if they see further action but uh, I think at the moment all that's working pretty much in the uh, RBA's favor so they're pretty comfortable with that dollars at attractive level as well yeah. so I think they're pretty happy to hold at this point all right fantastic Simon really appreciate all your thoughts there this morning thanks so much for joining us morning Leanne thank you